and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Abzan Knights, our next donation deck that we're going to be playing here today. So this kind of combines the Selesnya Knights and the um, Orzov Troll Knights. It kind of combines those two together to make one Abzan Knight deck. And it looks pretty sweet. Um, as you see here, uh, we have a, just a ton of knight synergies. Of course, we have Worthy Knight and Acclaimed Contender being the the main one of those. Acclaimed Contender can hit a whole lot of cards in this deck because it not only can get you any of the knights, uh, but then it also, of course, gets the legendary artifacts. So we have one Circle of Loyalty, one the Great Henge. Order of Midnight is another knight that that's a pretty good pretty good thing to hit off of Acclaimed Contender in the late game that can basically be any other creature that you had in your graveyard you know you can put it back into your hand and we have a way to put more creatures in our graveyard of course because the cavalier thorn is an elemental knight so we have that to be able to put some creatures into the graveyard or yeah just basically anything in the graveyard there so there's a lot of good synergies here um, i think this deck looks like it can play a very good late game especially with having the great henge and everything it's just whether we're going to have enough interaction for our opponent and if we can survive, I think. But it looks like we have a lot of a lot of good stuff going on here. Um, they I think that we have a, a pretty good Jun Sacrifice matchup with having these three Knight of Autumns in the main deck. We got the fourth over here, plus a Disenchant, plus the Orzhov Usurpers that can exile Witch's Oven and exile Cauldron Familiar, plus triple Casualties of War in the... Uh, in the sideboard so yeah we're going to be blowing up a lot of stuff so i definitely see how we're um, really focusing on that matchup here but let's give this a try we got abs and knights let's see how it does so just like with all the other donation decks we're gonna play a league let's see if we can get that five win dream play till we win five or lose two whichever happens first Um, yeah, we don't have any one drops. I could see playing like Knight of the Ebon Legion for a one drop that, you know, scales w well later on. I could see that. Uh, could see playing some more Paradise Druids with, with how difficult our mana is. I'm, I'm skeptical that that Circle of Loyalty will be too great. Uh, Foulmire. Yeah, Foulmire's an option too. I think I like Ebon Legion more than Foulmire just because of how Ebon Legion can just take over games where you're just like hoping that Foulmire trades with something. I think Foulmire is a lot better. The reason why, why Foulmire Knight is, is really at its best is whenever you're playing the the three Lovestruck Beast, the three mana 5-5. Five five. I guess that is the third green source I need for Vivian. I'll just keep it. Oh, yep. New deck. We're on Abzan Knights now. Well, we are playing... It's like we are playing Jun Sacrifice, so we have a ton of stuff in our sideboard here for this. Potentially too much stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We this deck wouldn't really play Evan Legion on turn one. It would just be a, a one mana card to be able to double spell later on in the game. Because yeah, this this would not be playing it on turn one. Um, but it also makes sense just not going that not going that route. Also, yeah, I played the the shock land instead of the scry land because. So we have the tip. We want the triple green for Vivian, and plus, really like this turn right here. 
it wasn't like there was some card in particular that we really needed to scry for. The the scry lands are the most valuable the later on that you can save them because like whenever you're later on in the game and as you see we've drawn like a couple of lands where now we're like okay well we really don't want to draw a land now we can scry and, and set up our next draw step and make sure to not draw the land. I'd get out of the way um, if I were. Where like early on in the game whether you draw a land draw a spell like your first couple draws it's really not that big of a deal either way. And so the scry lands are the the least valuable they ever will be usually like on turn one. And the best part about playing them on turn one is, of course, getting the tap land into play and allowing you to curve out later. But if, if you're not worried about the tap land later on, it's good to save the, the scry land. And I wasn't really worried about a land that came into play tapped later. What's the game plan against Jun Sacrifice? Out grind him. Which is tough to do. That's the plan. It's very tough to do, I'll say. Post sideboard, our sideboard has even more uh, artifact and enchantment destruction. So we're gonna have a lot of artifact and enchantment destruction games two and three. I won a game today where my opponent had lethal on board but lost because of their timer. It was so intense. Wow. That is intense. Um, yeah, the Great Henge. Yep, that's, that's a good game plan. Now this this temple right here is pretty valuable. That's that's a really good temple right there. Without saving it. So yeah, presumably they're gonna be they're they're hoping to draw a land and be able to play Liliana. Darn. I was hoping they weren't, but then we do draw two cards. Of course. They get to draw two cards as well. March into battle and make new comrades. But we got more mana. I wish I didn't have to make my decision until after I drew my cards. I guess I just get this to kill Liliana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, one mana off. From playing the Murderous Rider again also.
All right, now it's time to use Castle Artevale and Circle of Loyalty to make more creatures. Hey, Skin! Skin 207 with the donation deck. All right, Abzan is my favorite three-color deck, and I've been liking all the lists you've played, but I want you to try a different approach. Monday, fourth slot. All right. I'll write that down. Here we go, Monday, fourth slot. From Skin 207. Our new Abzan deck. Thank you very much. Yep, I'll play that tomorrow. So I can attack and I can basically attack and trade both of my creatures for the Mayhem Devil or trade both of my creatures for a Paradise or trade one creature for a Paradise Druid. It's probably not worth attacking. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that, Lord. Azori Circle went awesome yesterday. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to play. The yeah, the we got to do some really cool stuff with it. Yeah, it, it really went awesome. I recommend checking out that video from yesterday. Thank you so much there, Lord. I'm sorry, Sala. I do shuffle this overgrown tomb back by shuffling with the Fable Passage. I guess they also get the Mayhem Devil Trigger though also. Circle of Loyalty, whenever we play a Legendary Spell, we make another 2-2, two -two, which is really a 3-3. Three -three. Good old 6-6 six -six Questing Beast. Yeah, I wish I didn't play that Fabled Passage. They have to trade. And this isn't a very good attack. Because they they sacrifice Paradise Druid, make a food, deal one to the questing beast, sack the food to the witch's oven to make to the wicked wolf to make the wicked wolf indestructible, block and kill. So like it's, they basically can trade the Paradise Druid for the Questing Beast. If I attack out. Still not the best attack either. At least if this does two damage, kills that. Uh, it's not the worst attack though. It's not a. It's not the worst attack. 
Yeah, Beast is a 6-6, six, six, but it'd have damage on it, and this would the Wicked Wolf would be a 5-5. Five, five. It's really not a bad attack. If I shuffle, they get to kill the 1-1. One, one for free. Now it would have been a horrible attack with that last card being Assassin's Trophy. It went from not a bad attack to a horrible attack. Real fast. Trailer Crumbs, of course, was there perfect to draw. I needed to rip a bunch of creatures now with this Great Henge. Or removal from Mayhem Devil would be really nice. That was just the That was just the best turn that's ever happened. Yeah, really good thing we didn't attack, but now still they get to mow down so much stuff. I certainly do not want to draw do not want to draw that forest If I... If I use Murderous Rider to kill the Mayhem Devil... What are they doing the damage at? The Questing Beast? I was gonna say they could they could sacrifice the mayhem devil to prevent me from being able to replay the murderous rider here. So I think this is a good sign for me that they're killing Questing Beast and, and just a good sign of the Murderous Rider, the Swift End resolving and me actually casting the Swift End, or me actually casting the Murderous Rider. They're, they're at six life right now. They're not at four. They're at six life. The questing piece isn't lethal, even though it, put, puts it, it would put him down to one. Okay.
We are going to be able to kill the Mayhem Devil. And they got rid of their lifelink blocker, also. I guess they're at seven. At seven life? Too much black mana earlier. The stuff. They were tapped out of witches' ovens. I would have been able to kill the wicked wolf there if I had an extra black mana, which I'm sure I could have, because I, I spent one, two, three, four, five black mana. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but six are tapped. So in some place, I tapped a black land instead of the a green white. Why are they cycling the, the cat on their turn to draw it to, to look for spells with trailer crumbs? Probably looking for Mayhem Devil. Because Mayhem Devil help would help mow down attacking creatures. I guess. But now it's it's too late now. Alright, so we got Disenchant, uh, Kaya's, Golgari Queens, Casualties, Knight, Knight of Autumn. Dang, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff there. I mean, we're, we're bringing in six drops, so I think we have to kind of cut some of our top ends. Is it possible that I don't really want to claim contenders? I don't have enough knights now. We'll just take those things out. No, Tristani was in Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah, true. Vivian's good. I mean, 
mean, I don't know what I don't know what else to cut. Like, if we just cut a whole bunch of other stuff, then these aren't really gonna. Then those won't trigger if we cut a whole bunch of other stuff. So I don't I don't know what else to cut whenever we have all of these cards to bring in. Yeah, grasp would be awesome for Corvold. I'm kind of hoping we have enough for Corvold anyway. <laughs> the only solution is just a 75 card deck. Our deck has 26 lands. So pretty reasonable assumption for us drawing lands. Yep. One, make sure. Double check. Yeah, we got 26. Can we go and go Guardi Queen next turn to destroy the trailer crumbs? Because that's the plan. Guessing they have Cauldron Familiar. Oh, Duress. It's annoying. Yeah, Grasp kills some stuff. For sure. Don't really find room to to put it though. Well now I wish I would have just played the Arcbow Ranger. Since we have the Kaya that we'll be able to play, like I could have Kaya to then Temple of Silence the next turn. Obviously, I played the Temple of Silence trying to go to Tr Tristani. Afterwards. Because if I shock in for Vivian, and then I put counters on the Paradise Druid, then I just have the three lands. If they kill my Paradise Druid, um, you know, I would have just had three lands playing Temple of Silence. I uh, didn't really want to expose the Paradise Druid like that, but obviously now I do. Yeah, that goose definitely has an attitude. Yeah, it does. Iron Crag Feet does count as seven red mana for Sundering Stroke. It does. I didn't say fair. I'll be back. Just you wait.
Their hand was incredible. It was really, really good. <laughs> I bet you can't hit me again. That really was it, just an amazing hand. All set up, of course, by the trail of crumbs. Getting them all these extra cards. Like, they've already drawn five more cards than us. It's it's their turn five. Good. Trailer crumbs out of here. That's a start. <laughs> Do not have planar cleansing to draw. Yeah, this is just next game. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'll have the, yeah, I, I don't have room for duress. I don't, I don't really have room for duress or, yeah, duress is good. I don't have room for it. I don't have room for duress and I don't have room for, that's, so let's talk about, I think we have too many cards for this, for this matchup. Like me not playing, sure, we'll take another land here that also takes another card out of the deck. Uh, me not playing, yeah, we don't have Duress, uh, the Noxious Grass, but then, like, the fact that we're just not playing Worthy Knight or Acclaim Contender is pretty silly, but... So the fact that we're not playing Worthy Knight, Acclaim Contender is really silly, but we don't, we don't have any room. possible it's possible I cut a land I, it's possible I should cut a land oh, we kind of got stuck on man the last game but it's it's definitely like maybe we should go for with having all this interaction we go from 26 to 20 25 land
I would like to be able to have Golgari Queen kill a trail of crumbs. And of course, they have Mirror's Rider. My opponent's had a has done really good at having having like an answer that they need or and or want every turn. Paradise Druid's dead. Yeah, the only time I attack with the Paradise Druid, instant punish. Yep. So I block with Midnight Reaper, then they play... Play Mayhem Devil, sack the Fabled Passage, kill my Midnight Reaper... But I, I don't think we can just sit here and take one damage forever. And I don't I don't really mind this because also you know like the lower our life total the worse Midnight Reaper is. So I think that we need to cash in the Midnight Reaper as well. I guess I could have attacked first the Questing Beast, but then they would do the one damage to the Golgari Queen, and then they would be able to attack, uh, I don't know, they'd be able to kill the Golgari Queen. So I don't mind that. I mean, they dealt damage to us, which just with Cauldron Familiars.
feel like that's a bad use of casualties. But I, I don't like just playing Order of Midnight, and I want to play Order before Cavalier of Night. Well, maybe it was a good use of casualties. Sack and the lifelink creature. Yeah, if I I would not cast the casualties if I did not have a backup way to destroy an artifact or enchantment, but I had one in hand with the Knight of Autumn. Well, that draw keeps him alive. There you go. Thanks, Candice. Yeah, that, that link with all the decks. Um, the mill deck is also up on the YouTube channel as well. If you want to check it out over there as well, there's the YouTube channel. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of links. <laughs> no, I didn't attack first because I don't really want it like... I don't know, I could, could attack with the Knight of Autumn, but if they just block, if they have Cauldron Familiar come back and block the Knight of Autumn, then that's kind of rough. Or they just block with the Paradise Druid. I just want to get that Gilded Goose out of there. Okay, we're 1 and 0. Oh. A good short 45 minute match. <laughs> yeah, nice short 45 minute match. All right, so Top card's a land we put to the bottom. If it's not a land, we'll put it on top. We already know what we're scrying for. That's an important thing in life. Know, know what you're scrying for. Life lessons here. Yeah, when you have two life, you can shock and go to zero. You can pay two, you can pay two life when you have two life. You cannot pay two life when you have one life. If you have one life, it doesn't let you pay two life. But when you have when you have two life, you can pay two life. <laughs> do or do not. There is no scry. <laughs> oh, that cutthroat was so fast. I didn't even see it coming. Okay, awesome, Hillbilly. Undefeated in best of one with the deck from earlier. Awesome. 
Glad to hear. Another tap tap for Cavalier of Thorns. <clears throat> Could have gone Knight plus Paradise Druid. Uh, they had a borrower. Boom. Now it looks like that's what I should have done. I, I feel like we have just too much for Jun Sacrifice, as we talked about, and we don't have enough here against the Counterspell Heavy decks. I I really have nothing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I just really have nothing in the sideboard. And... That's not good, because our main deck isn't very good against it with all this top end. And I have nothing in the sideboard. <laughs> so, yeah, we just we have too much... Too much sideboard for anti cauldron familiar. Not enough against flash. Which one of these top end cards do I want to cut? Well, Tristani can go. You break my heart. Can we cut a land? Should we cut a land? Okay, we'll just play one of each of the five mana cavaliers. <laughs> Don't cut lands. Lands can't get countered. Yeah, Ceratops would, would help out. Just take a land out of the deck. Take another land out of the deck. Deck thin in. Look at that. We're one card further in the deck than they are. I'd rather trade Knight of Autumn with Bone Crusher Giant than Questing Beast with Bone Crusher Giant. 
Midnight Reaper is kind of the best card to play, but it dies to all their, their shock spells, like dies to more Bone Crusher Giants. Where it's harder to kill Knight of Autumn. I guess that's how you kill Knight of Autumn. Thanks, legit sale. Thank you. Yeah, this does seem like a very good Ceratops metagame. Lots and lots of counter spells. After the death of Vela Summer. Wonder if they would have had to ban Vela Summer if they would have just made it cost two mana, like all the other cards in the cycle cost two mana. Fianturo with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Fianturo. I appreciate that. Definitely assuming Questing Beast is going to get countered. I like playing it post-combat just because we got to attack with this stuff before it got tapped. It is possible they just don't really have counter spells because they've been tapping out a whole lot. So it's it's possible they're just not... They don't really have counter magic. Might as well have all the information possible. So we got five cards over there.
I just should have killed Cutthroat instead of Gadwick. I don't know. They would have just tapped this thing now. game all right so sideboard and the person that donated for it said it was a work in progress but sideboard we have too much for too much for the cat decks and not nearly enough against counter spell decks so we're learning they just don't have cards to bring in there I think that our I think our sideboard like all I think I honestly just think all of the like all the casualties of work can just go and could play like shifting ceratops instead. I don't think there's really. Really enough of a reason to play the casualties of war in the sideboard and just too expensive. Our our deck doesn't doesn't really ramp and stuff like that. So this looks like Um like the model black at Yara trying to ping us to death. The song name right now is Everlong by the Foo Fighters. I'm not sure if you asked at an earlier time for the last song or this one. You're welcome. Oh, it's one and one. Sorry, I just put the I put the one on the wrong thing. You're correct. Yep, we're one and one. Thank you.
murderous writers. if they're going to do the same thing of sack the Orzhov Enforcer or not. They may just sacrifice the Midnight Reaper and then my Murderous Rider goes away. Yeah, this, this looks like an, an Ayara drain deck. Um, I think Divine Arrow is better than Gideon's Triumph. Yeah, Gideon's Triumph is Sacrifice. Yeah, I think Divine Arrow is better. After this league, whenever this league is, whenever we do finish up with the league, I, I do have a another bounty to do. Um, showing off uh, some charity streams from State Farms, Neighborhood of Good. It is good to get the cards out of, out of hand in case there's more of those discard things. So I'm just going to Order of Midnight. Grab... I guess I grab Night of Autumn. And then just play Night of Autumn, destroy the Switch's Oven. So they do find Cauldron Familiar, they don't get that that stuff going on anymore. So at the end of the league, if y'all stick around for that, I would really, really appreciate that. Just give me two minutes. So attacking with Knight of Autumn to make it more difficult for them to have two creatures to, sacri to sacrifice with Priest. I, mean, I don't even know if that makes sense. I guess I would be able to have an extra creature to be able to sacrifice if they do get the Priest trigger. Take out Vivian, Circle of Loyalty, put a couple Kayas in here that can gain some life for us. I 
I think I kind of like the rest of what we got going on here, though. So we'll keep it the same. I could see taking out Murderous Rider or playing Golgari Queen instead. Basically, all the things that Murderous Rider are going to kill, Golgari Queen also kills. But then, of course, we get to play the knight part of it, and it's a knight that we get to grab with, like, a claimed contender and everything like that, too. Like, our opponent's deck just plays, you know, the four Witches' Ovens, four Call of Familiars. They're not... They can certainly win without that. So I don't, I don't think we necessarily need more Knight of Autumn. It's... I mean, I guess they could be the Ayara. They, they could be the Citadel version, though. Well, then, uh, probably attack with Orzhov Enforcer, right? I guess maybe not. Maybe they just won't play defense. I don't know. They miss land drop. It's unfortunate for them. All right, first black mana source there with the tomb. We want to Cavalier of Night, the Reaper. Before they start trading. Exile, no. I was definitely thinking about just sacrificing that to the Cavalier of Dawn to be able to put Tristani back. I don't know, maybe I should just play Cavalier of Night. attack with this thing a long while ago, shouldn't I? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I guess they, yeah, I guess they want to keep the Orzhov Enforcer to be able to deal with the Cavalier of Night. No! Eh. I was gonna attack out. I was gonna attack with everything. I will. That looks pretty good for us. Mm, glad to be here. Your problem <laughs> got, got to get rid of that one one. Watch your back from here on out. Still a 
alive. Land Masker Girl. Land Masker Girl. Land Masker Girl! Sweet. All right, we got a game again. It's not over. Uh, yeah, we scry first. Draw first. Scry first. I'll be back. Just you. Okay, they're at one. Can they come back? The comeback of the century. Yeah, I did need to play the bird. The bird was the bird was a little much. I didn't need to play that bird that last turn. That's fine though. Not sure how that was a good play. Bird, 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 the word. You're back from here on out. Yeah, they you don't have to sacrifice with Cavalier. I don't I don't know why they sacrificed the menace thing to kill my two three. It's not a good block for killing them the next turn. No. Alright, I guess I should have got rid of the Fenlurker. Shouldn't I? That's why I noticed like the Fenlurker was gonna get rid of my Great Henge. Yeah, they are back in this. Business to attend to anyway. They are back in this. They only have seven cards in exile, so they can get above that by attacking with the Cavalier of Night.
good for you. Shuffling me off my mortal coil. Yeah, I think they're ahead now. Oh no, it's close. I think they may be ahead. So I could have just killed the Cavalier of Night though. When I had the chance. Earlier. Yeah, maybe I should have removed the Ors of Enforcer. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I've just played this pretty poorly since my opponent Masker Girled. My decisions with Kaya haven't been too good, and my blocking decisions haven't been too good. Don't want to let them untap and be able to sacrifice stuff with the Yara and draw cards with that. Yeah, Mono Black's taking care of taking care taking care of business. Yeah, the, the <clears throat> real turning point was not exiling the Fenlurker, letting them Fenlurker the, the Great Henge. That was a really, really bad decision by me. Um, I took a Yara and Midnight Reaper that turn, which I could have earlier. I needed to I, I need to exile those better than what I did. That was that was the the thing that if I lose this, that was the one singular decision that definitely cost me. It was not. I mean, there there's a lot. You know, playing playing the bird. If I just don't play the bird out, I probably have lethal with the bird the next turn. This does force them to use all this mana and not be able to activate castle now. They didn't. You won. They had the two mana. They didn't put the gutter bones back in their hand. Where's Puppy? Puppy's hanging out in the living room. You want me to go grab Puppy? No, the after combat phase priest completely made sense. There's nothing wrong with that. 
They got to do the damage with the 1-1 flyer before sacrificing it. Yeah, they, they need to put the gut. Yeah, you can only get gutter bones back on your turn, but yeah, they can do it at instant speed. They they needed to do that. I don't think I have basics left. I think isn't it just the four? Is there four basics? Yes, four basics. Only two cards in the library. Okay. Two and one. That was a good, fun match after, you know, I think that really, really long match there. Two and one. Um, no, not too much improvement on the Hawkeye front. Not too much improvement over there. Oh yeah, gonna go grab puppy. Uh, let's go ahead and keep this. All right, I'm gonna go grab puppy. Be right back. such a difficult decision to make. Here's Bubby. Hey, Ralph Guru. Yeah, Hawkeye's sick. And he went to the vet and got some medicine, but he's not, he's not doing too much better. So much pressure. Pelt Collector into Zertal Goblin on the play. Puppy's so cute. She's so camera shy, too. Um, so I don't get extra one ones. I think if we if we have the ability to trade trade with Pelt Collector, that gets a whole lot bigger. I think that's a 
a trade worth doing if we had that ability to. Yeah, Colossus. Colossus hurt. Ah, it's a beautiful day for chaos, isn't it? Oh, there'll be nothing but death. Huh. They could just attack also, and I would have blocked. Nice, yeah. No, Gates... I think Gates are pretty good. I think Gates match up well against... Um, that's just lethal. I think Gates match up well against the Jun Sacrifice deck. How does this look, pup? What do you think? Does it look good? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh no, pup's running away. It says we have no chance. It says run away, girl's gonna get us. <laughs> nope. Thanks, Hiccup. Yeah, I'm trying, Kendis. Uh, been too busy here with the computer stuff recently. But I'm trying. Hey, <laughs> yeah, Gruel Aggro, you don't go for the 40 minute game. That's true. So, reminder if, if we lose this, I have a bounty to do after this. After whenever we pick up our second loss or fifth win. So if we lose this, we'll be doing a bounty. Well, two-minute thing about um, charity streams. I hope y'all, like, please stick around for that. Bounties are something that I earn revenue based on how many people are in here. So I'd really appreciate that. Do you know you're on camera? Ugh. There we go. Sit like this. You can sit facing the camera. Bounty is basically an advertisement. Of course, Ember Cleave would be devastating. <clears throat> Certainly hope no Ember Cleave.
Requesting beast. At least that's not Embercleave. <clears throat> and I can knock just grasp that thing. I wouldn't mind drawing Woodland Cemetery here. Hey. That's untapped black mana, that's good. But well, not you. That lets me have Noxious Grasp and Swift End available. Oh, come on. Hexproof. Yeah, what's the deal with that, puppy? Yay, no questing beast. Uh, Alright, puppy. Alright, say say bye to everybody. Puppy, say bye. Say bye. No, 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 don't get to go eat Hawkeye's food. All right, we got that game. Going to game three. No, it's the other way around. Hawkeye, Hawkeye is afraid of the dogs, but yeah, yeah, Hawkeye is afraid of the dogs. So it's, it's that way, but he's just back there napping right now. He's good. All right, game three. I don't love our chances, game three. On the draw. With them going, you know, Collision Colossus and everything. <laughs> yeah, just part of Hawkeye's schemes. We all know his schemes are never ending. I love seeing no one drop and no two drop. Assume that means Bone Crusher Giant. But still. Definitely love seeing the no one drop, no two drop. Trading with the Spellbreaker <clears throat> before the Spellbreaker does damage to us. Not bad. Draw black mana. 
Well, that'll do. Of course, I want a black mana so I can play Cavalier of Night, sack the Paradise Druid, kill the Questing Beast, and have a Cavalier of Night in back, you know, like, be able to block with that. Because, yeah, they, they had the Bone Crusher Giant there. Um, just get this thing in play right now. So, black mana is going to be something I'm struggling with here. I like that they just have the castle for red mana. I don't like that. Certainly consider blocking with the Worthy Knight also because of Colossus. But even with that thing doing damage to me, it's pretty easy to block this thing with just other... With, like, tokens and stuff, though, as well. Obviously, if they have another Colossus, I lose. If they have another Questing Beast, I lose. I guess if I don't attack with Questing Beast... I was thinking that, that we just want to trade here anyway, but I guess if I don't attack with Questing Beast, then... Then I actually get to block... Yeah, you know, like, basically, attacking would be bad if they, if they had another Questing Beast. If they had a third one. Yeah, Embercleave kills us. Colossus kills us. That was a great card. Gosh, that was a great card. Guess that's my best block. That's how I can keep a worthy knight alive. Come on, land. Ugh. I just put four lands down to the bottom. Gross. <laughs> well, I'm not playing Midnight Reaper. I think we've stabilized enough to be able to get this other worldly knight in play. Darn. I mean, if we would have drawn a land, I would have played the Cavalier of Thorns. It would have gave us the reach. Alright, so again, we'll be doing a bounty here in a little bit, so, so don't leave, y'all. Appreciate it if you don't leave. Anyway, first. Our 26 land deck. 
kind of let us down. But the acclaimed contenders just put all those lands down to the bottom. They they kept on doing that. Um, yes, it is. Uh, chain, yeah, yeah, it is. Anyway, so there we go. There's Abzan Knights. I'd say I liked the Order of Midnight as far as a two drop goes. I thought that was pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> I think our, our man is a little tough, of course, with playing the, the black and the green Cavalier. I think it could maybe be cleaned up. Like, we could maybe have, like, just a lower curve in general. There's so many good knights. Um, maybe we don't need, like, the... I don't need some of that. I don't know. I feel, I feel like Vivian and, and Circle of Loyalty. I think those are probably my two least favorite cards in uh, in the deck. Um, I could see just playing two more Paradise Druids, honestly, instead of Vivian and Circle of Loyalty. Like, we have a pretty good late game anyway with the Acclaimed Contenders and Midnight Reapers drawing a lot of cards. You know, look for the Great Henge and stuff like that. Cyborgs, we talked about. We need more against the anti-counterspell decks. I think we have enough against... I think... Yeah, I think we have enough against the... Um, the non... The other decks, whatever, whatever they're called. I wouldn't play... I don't like the Disenchant. I think... Maybe just another Golgari Queen. I think that's probably just a better disenchant. Like, so we have the four Knight of Autumns, then we have Golgari Queens and Kayas. I think that's probably enough against the Sacrifice deck. And I think the Casualties of Wars are just overkill. So I think the Casualties of Wars can go, and those could be re replaced with Ceratops to give you some anti-counterspell stuff. That's the main thing about, about, um, about the sideboard. And then if Vivian and Circle of Loyalty were gone, I mean, Questing Beast is just kind of awesome, and it was just really good for us all the time. Well, there's just another Questing Beast. And another Paradise Druid. Uh, it's, it's been a few weeks now, Commuter, so yeah, that command just doesn't work. Yeah, there's other there's definitely other good knights to be playing too. Um, but I think the Paradise Druid will, will help with the consistency. And Questing Beast is just always good. Um could have another removal spell over here in the sideboard also, maybe like a Dispark. Um yeah, Blacklands Paragon is great against that card is great against Gruel. That is true. Uh, probably, I think I would want like a Legion's End though for the Edgewall Innkeeper decks, just to have that that exile against the Edgewall Innkeeper decks, and and just against aggro in general. I think like one Legion's End would be nice. So there we go. That's that's a little bit of cleanup there that could help. Um, yeah, we have Kaya for that, but I don't know if I want. Yeah, we do have Kaya for that, but still, I think one Legion's End would be nice. Um, but but yeah, if, if it turns out the Legion's End doesn't matter, you could play a fourth Ceratops, because we did really struggle against the Counterspell deck, so you could play a fourth Ceratops there, um, or some other can't-be-countered thing, uh, or more instant speed removal that kills, you know, Brazen Borrowers and Brineborn Cutthroats. Maybe you want something else there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can definitely win games. It's a good lead and it can happen. It's a really strong card. I think it's good enough for a one of. Anyway, there we go. There's Abs and Knights. Um, pretty interesting putting the, the decks together. I'd say one card I was really impressed with was the Order of Midnight in the long games. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there and sub to the channel. And also uh, feel free to leave some comments. Appreciate doing all of that. But thank you so much for watching some Abzan Nights, and I'll see you for the next video.